on The Supernatural Now. I want your children to step in their own only with God. When they go back to school, they can say, wait a minute, you can't talk about my God. You can't talk about my God. You will stand and defend because you know your God. The Supernatural Now with Apostle Guillermo Maldonado. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it. You know the scriptures, this is what the Bible says, I choose to be joyful, I choose to be, to have the joy of God in my life. I want you to be ready to receive this powerful message and at the same time you will hear powerful testimonies of people, how they changed their immaturity, how they were transformed from uh, being someone that they are uh, full of fear to someone, someone full of boldness. Let's watch. The galaxies are waiting for this Sunday. There is a yearning for the sun to bring his glory. Come on, bring his glory. In excitement, the galaxies are waiting for this Sunday. There is a yearning for the sun to bring his glory. We want to see. We want to see His glory rise to what was dead come back to life With His great miracles will show this cloud of witnesses We want to see His glory rise to what was dead come back to life With His great miracles will show this cloud of witnesses any country that you're watching, we welcome you in the supernatural now. I will be teaching about fellowship and intimacy with God. The introduction is that Christianity is not a religion or a bunch of rules or a formula. Um, Christianity is a relationship. When somebody asks me, Apostle, how do you develop a strong uh, relationship or prayer life with God? And my answer to them is there's certain patterns and principles that Jesus left, but there's not a formula that you can say, now I do this, now I can pray, now and then I, 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 I worship and I do this. There's certain pattern that you follow, but let's go into what the Bible tells us. And Jesus come to teach a relational theology. In other words, you see today that... that um, Many things took the place of relationship, or godly, a fellowship and relationship. And um, the whole reason is to, that Jesus came to earth was to restore that relationship with men. That's the main thing. God is seeking for that relationship, and relationship is possible now. Say with me, it's possible now. The three greatest obstacles for that relationship with God to be strong, steady, continual. Number one, discouragement. Disappointments in life. There's many people that get discouraged, disappointed. A people, circumstances, crisis that come. And they're so easy. They're so, they break the relationship with God so easy. Do you mean because you get upset with a brother? You stop coming to church. And they do because they, they, know they don't value their relationship with God. Amen. Number one, disappointments. How many of you have had disappointments, discouragement? I have. I'm not going to present to you to say I'm perfect. No, I've been disappointed. People have disappointed me. Things have disappointed me. False expectation. I expected something and it didn't happen. And I say, God, what happened? And I got discouraged. But again, I go back to my relationship with God. If I have a strong relationship with God, I said, God will never disappoint in me. Listen to this. Number two, resentment and unforgiveness. These people get offended, bitter, resent. There's so much resentment in their heart. 
And that's because you receive most 95% of the people that left the church is because they offended with someone. Do not let offense come in to interfere with your relationship with God. Don't, do not. You need to forgive. And number three, the fear of men. The fear of men. What is the fear of men? Is to live your life according to the expectation of the people. Any decision that you make, you are thinking what people think about it. Those three things are the greatest obstacle to the relationship and the fellowship and your intimacy with God. What is the condition of the church today? Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. I want you to see, I know thy works. I know neither cold or hot. And then he keep talking. Verse 16. So because you are lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because you say, I'm putting it in modern terms. You say, I am rich. And increase with goods. Materialism. Everything is, Pastor, you mean you don't want prosperity? We do want prosperity. We believe in for a mega blessing and abundance. But that's not my priority. My priority is my relationship with God. Do you want the church to prosper? Yes, I do. Do I sow to prosper? Yes, I do. I do believe the people of God is God's will to prosper. But that's not my priority. My priority is my relationship with God daily. So, and then he said, I am rich, increasing goods, and I have, I have need of nothing. And what did Jesus said? Wretch, and what else? Miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Every word represents a condition of the church. Every word. First, he said, you're miserable. You're not satisfied. You're so consumed with your problem that you never had time for me. You're so consumed with your business. You got time for everything, for your friend, not for me. That's what God says. Poor, blind, meaning there's no revelation. You're blind. And then he said, and naked. That's the worst part. I counsel thee to buy gold tried in fire. And then he keeps saying, what he was missing, why Jesus rebuked this church so much, because of this. One of the things he was, they were missing was they lost and they had broken relationship and intimacy with God. Number two, they lost their faith. But however, they were saying, no, no, I feel awesome. How do you do? Oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You're miserable. You get up in the morning and you don't have a sense of purpose and destiny. And you told me you're good. You get up in the morning and you're still in the same cycle. Your life is a mess. What is one of the problems that they had? Absence of intimacy. One of the problems they had, it was absence of fellowship, relationship, true relationship with God. I want your children to step in their own only with God. When they go back to school, they can say, wait a minute, you can't talk about my God. You can't talk about my God. You will stand and defend because you know your God. Those that know their God will do exploits. Those that know their God, they will stand. You know that you know. No, you serve a God that is alive. You don't come to church to be entertained. You don't want you want to offend people. Your relationship with God is so strong that sometimes we'll offend people. We'll offend, they will call you a radical, they will call you extremist. And you said, I don't care as long as I know my God. When I cry out, He will hear me. When I cry out, when I pray, He will hear me. If you want that relationship to be restored because it's broken, I want you to stand. 
those people that are standing and they're saying yes I want that commitment with God because my relationship is broken I want you to run to the altar and I want you to give a, a covenant with God run I want you to lift your hands do this prayer prayer of commitment say it out loud father God if you're watching by the internet do this prayer by television say father God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus help me Lord help me Lord say I repent I repent if I lost my relationship with you forgive me cleanse me with your blood today say today I make a commitment I make a covenant to have a strong and deeper relationship with you Lord help me I need you I want to be your bride help me Lord every day give me your grace to develop strong relationship with you thank you Lord hallelujah Jesus James Garcia. Um, at a young age, I was always um, in anger. I was always angry. Um, it started developing once I started being physical with my sister, and we was always fighting, and then it escalated. As I started escalating, I started getting physical with other women, with other people. My parents were really concerned, and they wanted to take me to a psychiatrist because of my anger and they wanted to put me in pills. They wanted to put me in medication to, to calm me down. My darkest point of my life is, was when I was um, about to murder somebody. I came back to my senses and I started, I started realizing, man, I can be facing, I can be facing some time. That's when I was charged with a felony and battery um, and a misdemeanor. I remember when I was going through that, uh, my aunt was a believer. She was a firm believer and she, she always believed in me. She always uh, brought Bibles to me to read. Uh, she, she kept praying for me and uh, she, she kept insisting that I should go to church. And um, when I was in jail, all I, all I did was think about God and, and I was like, look God, if you take me out of this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And, and right then and there, he took me out and the, the charges was dropped and I felt like I was like, I, I, he deserves my life. Um, whatever he wants me to do and I'll, I'll do it. When I came to the feet of God, I started seeing a difference. I started seeing my, how my behavior started to change. My outlook on life started to change. I started finding identity. I started finding integrity. Um, every, every word that he spoke into my life I started believing. After many prophecies that, that, that were given to me about becoming a businessman, I kept on praying and persevering. And there was times that I felt like giving up. Yes, there was times that I felt discouraged, but that word was just living in me and I wanted to act on it. And I said, God, if this is your will, let it be done. And I didn't stop until I saw it completed. Um, I didn't allow my circumstances and what I was facing those times stop me. And now that I'm blessed with a business, I'm blessed with two businesses. I'm blessed with a woman that, that, that a lot of people doubted in the process of of becoming a businessman. She was the backbone to my business and now that she's, she, we are engaged. We are, she's, she became my fiance. We're, we're looking to get married and all that was just because of prayer and perseverance. I am so thankful and so blessed to have someone come to my life and believe in me. I am a product of that. Now I'm a businessman. I can say that I am blessed. I am married. Um, I am completely changed and transformed and my life will never be the same. My name is Reina Midarek. My life before Christ was really a mess. Um, my dad left when I was 10, um, and that caused a lot of rejection, that caused a lot of um, insecurities, that caused me to be in relationships that I knew wasn't good for me. And that led 
to a lot of depression because I was being abused mentally, but I didn't know that it was mental abuse. Um, and from there, uh, a friend invited me to a Bible study. And when I went to a Bible study, before I even stepped foot in there, I said, Lord, I knew you before. I didn't have a close relationship with you, but I knew that you know your word says for us to follow you. And um, I told God, I said, Father, forgive me for all of my sins. I know I've sinned before you. So once I walked into that um, Bible study, that's where God really touched my heart. That's where he, he showed me that I am your father and that I love you no matter what you did, no matter of your past. He told me, I love you. With my mother, bef before she got saved, she used to gamble a lot, you know, like every day. And I used to always tell her after I got saved, I'm like, mommy, God doesn't want you to do that. Like, God, God is your provider. She had a hard time understanding that God is her provider, that, you know, she knew, she knew that it was wrong. But I would pray for her. I, after I got saved, I was like, Lord, you know, I'm saved now. I want you to save my family. I want you to save those that I know. I want you to bring them into the kingdom. I'm going to tell them about you, but you got to do something. You know, that seed has to grow. I invited her to, it's, it's a deliverance retreat um, that they had at, a, at the um, Haitian King Jesus Ministry. And she came and she got delivered there. She told me, Reina, I never cried so much in my life. And you know, she was telling me her testimony about how she felt the presence of God, how she felt something that she never felt before you know so she came to an inner healing deliverance retreat she came to um, the welcome party which where she got baptized you know she got set free she received the love of God the peace of God she received tongues you know she received everything that she never received before in her life you know and that transformed her heart and that's all because of prayer you know standing in the gap for our family hi my name is Devin Perfumo I grew up in Miami Florida um, growing up up until like the age of 10 years old, I didn't really have too many problems. There was, everything was good. We were, I grew up in a nice household. But around the age of 10 years old, I found out that my parents were gonna get divorced. And my dad, I, I came to find out that my dad had been developing a drinking problem. And my mom was fed up with it. Uh, he was drinking, and then when he would drink, he would end up doing drugs. Never storming out of the house, but it was, it was a problem, and my mom didn't want us growing up in that, that type of situation. I remember that when they first got divorced, it didn't bother me too much. But as the, as the years progressed, not, not having a dad there, it kind of, it left a lot of empty time for me to kind of go wander. And, you know, I ended up, I ended up playing in bands. I ended up being a street kid. Um, but I myself also began to develop a drug problem. I was drinking, I was, I was doing drugs, cocaine, ecstasy. I just remember one day, I, I got so fed up. I was in a room and, and, I, and I was seeing all my friends around me getting high, everybody was smoking. And I fell on the floor in my room and I, and I cried out to God. And I said, God, I don't know if you're real or not, but I need to know. Because if this is life, I don't want to live another day. And I, and I told that to God, I said, God, if this is life, I don't, I don't want to live. I need you to be real. And a week later, an evangelist came up to me. And, and he came up to me, he told me, this is, his name's Raul, Raul Avila. And he came up to me, he told me, he's like, he's like, I don't know why, but I see you on the floor of your room. You cried out to God recently and nobody knows. And on top of that, he started telling me, I see you playing music, I see you in a band, I see you, um, you're helping out people that can't help you back. And at, at the time, a lot of my friends didn't know, but I worked with autistic kids and I was, I was always doing stuff, programs with them in school. And no, this guy said things that I, like, I was learning about myself as he prophesied to me, you know, and, and it, it shocked me. And I remember that when I got to the church, uh, there was a moment that I, I was just looking at the, at the service and, and I felt at the same time, I felt like a veal fall from my face. I felt a, a hundred thousand pounds fall off of me. I began to cry. I didn't know what was going on. And then that's, that's what, what really changed my life is that I realized God was, was real. He wasn't a religion. He wasn't uh, somebody that you go and you have to do a routine to please. He, he's, a, he's an actual being that speaks to us. He's somebody that, that delights in fellowship and, and conversates with us. I went to my first hop the next week and I be, that's really when I began to experience the presence of God. I went, I went to a, a Bible study that same week and I began to really experience the presence of God. After a couple years of being saved, I'd been praying for my family and I, I remember I just reached a point that I was like, God, if you save me, you could save my family. And I remember I just, one day I got fed up, something happened with my dad and, 
And I remember I got fed up and I said, God, I, I made a covenant with God. I said, God, I'm not gonna eat. I'm not gonna touch food or drink water until you do something in my dad's life. So I remember I prayed and I, and I, I spent a day and a half. I was praying, worshiping, going on with my routines, but I, I didn't eat. I was set, my heart was set that I wasn't gonna eat. And a day and a half into that fast, I heard, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, you could eat now. Like he released me and, and, I, and, and I knew that my prayer was answered. An hour, a couple hours after that, I get a call that my dad's in the hospital, that he had to get rushed to the hospital. They didn't know what was wrong with him, um, but he was getting severe stomach pain. So we get there, sure enough, one thing leads to the next, and the doctors are, are freaking out. People are walking around with paperwork, saying that he, if they think, if it, if it is what they think it might be, he might not make it past 24 hours. My dad was coming in and out of consciousness. He was, he was freaked out. Um, but it, it, was, it was weird because I remember I was there and, and I felt the Holy Spirit the whole time with me. And I knew I was in the middle of my prayer. As, as the world around me was in havoc and, and everybody was freaking out, nobody w knew what to do, I knew that, that what was happening around me was a result of what I prayed and what, what I put a demand on God to do. And sure enough, a couple days later, my dad leaves the hospital, he gets dismissed. And I found out that when he was there on that bed, he made a covenant with God that if he got out of there, he was gonna, he was gonna stop doing drugs, he was, gonna, he was gonna give up smoking, he was gonna give up drinking. And, and now it's been two and a half years that he hasn't drank, he hasn't, he hasn't done cocaine, he hasn't smoked weed. So now after that, my dad, he, he's been attending churches, he, uh, he got saved, he calls me all the time to pray with him on the phone, he's, he's, he always wants to pray. Every time I see him, he's like, son, pray with me, so we're always praying. And if, it never, if God never would have revealed to me his heart in prayer and intimacy, I never would have known what his plans were for my family. But because he did that, now I, I knew how to pray, I knew how to seek, and I knew how to push for my family, and I knew how to hear His voice for them. And because of that, now they're saved, they've encountered God, and my family, which was a family that used to take people into the things of the world, has now become a place that we lead people into the things of God. If you were touched by the program today, please call or write to us now. Our operators are standing by. powerful and my friend if you're watching if you never received Jesus as your personal Savior you know the Bible says that we all sinners we sin against God the wages of sin and death but the gift of God is eternal life if you're watching at home maybe you feel sad you feel lonely you're going through a tough time in life maybe you're blaming God maybe you're blaming other people maybe you're saying I am so disappointed I'm discouraged I don't understand but you know um, there's something very very powerful in the scripture. God is sovereign God. He is sovereign and we have to understand that things sometimes we don't understand but in the middle of not understanding you have to praise Him and give Him thanks. If you're watching at home, if you never received Jesus, the Bible says we all sinners the wages of sin and death but the gift of God is eternal life. Maybe you're saying no, I'm a bad person. I don't think God will forgive me. Yes, He will. He went to the cross and died for you. My friend, I invite you to do this prayer with me. Repeat out loud. If you're watching at home, maybe in your hotel room, maybe in your office, and you say, I need Jesus. I feel desperate. Say with me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, give us a call. Let us know that Jesus came into your heart. Don't be ashamed to say it. Because the Bible says if you be ashamed publicly before man, God will be ashamed of you. So I don't want you to say, yes, I received Jesus and Jesus came into my heart. And if you're watching at home, maybe if you feel sick in your body, maybe tormented, afflicted in your mind, maybe discouraged, and then you said, yes, uh, you know, I am so discouraged, I need prayer. I want you to stand your hands as a point of contact on your television. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all those people that are watching I rebuke every sickness every disease uh, lymphoma there's a lymphoma disappearing now in Jesus name cancer disappearing 
appear from their bodies. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for those people that are watching that don't know you, God, and, and they're looking for healing in their body, bones condition. There's bones being healed now in Jesus' name. People with depression and anxiety and, and stress be delivered in Jesus name amen if you're watching if you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit and then you say yeah I like to be baptized with the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name receive tongues be baptized in the Holy Ghost and power in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you everyone if you need anything if you need prayer you can call to the number on the screen and we're willing we're ready to pray for you God bless you see you next time TV. Access the supernatural anywhere. Get ready for our supernatural five-fold ministry school. Come together with an ever-expansive community of pastors, teachers, leaders, and entrepreneurs from all over the world for three days of teaching, impartation, activation, and an encounter with the supernatural power of God. With speakers, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, Prophet Anna Maldonado, Apostle Granny McLean, Prophet Bobby Connors, Apostle Patricia King, Prophet Cindy Jacobs, Prophet Sean Bowles, and prophetic praise and worship led by New Wine. Thousands today are walking in their purpose and fulfilling their destiny. Now is the time for you to do the same and advance the kingdom of God in your sphere of influence. Supernatural Five-Fold Ministry School, Module 15, June 21st to the 23rd. Register now at FivefoldMinistrySchool.com. This program is paid for by the friends and partners of Apostle Guillermo Maldonado and King Jesus International Ministry.